Hi, this is John Barber from IDW Publishing. You are listening to the GeekCast Radio Network. You've just jumped inside the pull bag. Join TFG1 Mike and the rest of the comic crew here at the GCRN as they make their great escape into comics. From DC, Marvel, and Image to IDW, Boom Studios, and Xenoscope, we have everything right here. We cover things like Transformers, He-Man, Superheroes, TMNT, and Radiant Black. Yeah, we have all that and so much more. It's all inside the pull bag here on the GeekCast Radio Network. So, without further ado, it's time to talk about the comics we're reading right now. Here inside the pull bag. This is artist Josh Burcham, and you jumped inside the pull bag only on the GeekCast Radio Network. Hello and welcome to the pull bag. Actually, it's a pull bag and all things Transformers crossover. This is episode 408 of the pull bag. It will be episode uh, 190-something for all things Transformers. I'm, of course, TFG1 Mike. Joining me, as always, for the IDW Beast Wars comic series is Steve Megatron. Hello, sir. Hello. Yes, and we have Transformers Beast Wars number three here in Autobali, April 2021, Savage Landing Part 3, written by Eric Burnham, art by Josh Burcham, letters by Jake M. Wood, assistant editor is Riley Farmer, the main editor is David Marriott, and the supervising editor is Mr. Tom Waltz. Oh boy, we will talk about the covers at the end, folks, but the main cover A for this issue... Yikes, that's creepy. Yep. Yep. Tarantulas hungry. Of course, Tarantulas is always hungry. So where we left off is that uh, Nyx has been captured. And, uh, yeah. We start at the dark side. And Waspinator's just walking through the base, through the ship. And we have Nyx on a torture table, apparently. <laughs> Shocking. Yep. Good evening, my dear, and welcome to the dark side. I am Megatron, and we're going to have... A wonderful conversation, you and I. <laughs> Thank you, Megatron, for that illustrious reading. I like this. Uh... I have so many questions, and you'll answer them all. Yes. Or tarantulas will cause you pain like you've never experienced. Tarantulas? But he's a butcher. He's a butcher. Ah, well, that's just one of the reasons I find him so useful. And we have Tarantulas and Dinobot, and Dinobot is basically ready to leave at this point. I know, he's like packed his bags. He's like, I'm sick of this crap. (laughs) (laughs) Screw you guys, I'm going home. I know. (laughs) Screw you guys, I'm going maximal. (laughs) That's true. I cannot wait until we see how that happens in in the next issue. Meanwhile, over at the Axelon, the home base to the Maximals, we have uh, Cheetor and Rattrap and Rhinox, and Cheetor is worried about Nyx, and Optimus is trying to be the best leader that he could be, but, you know, the way Cheetor sees it is that they just can't seriously be suggesting they abandon Nyx. And I get it. Optimus is basically saying, hey, let's wait until morning. But she could be dead by morning. Pretty much. Primal's just like, "Uh, there's just no pleasing some people. (laughs) Uh Uh-huh. Yes, exactly. Um, And, you know, we have Rhinox and, and Optimus talking about the mysterious uh, environment and how all of that's going to go and how Rhinox is basically telling them this is the exactly the kind of adventure you wanted. Well, maybe a little bit. Did I make the right call? 
I think all things considered, you were right to hold off until morning. Um, and we get back to the dark side, and they they do kind of make uh, Cheetor as if he's not quite the kid. They make Nix as the kid. Yeah, which I think is good because we've seen. Che- I mean, Cheetor still is the kid. He's kind of like the big brother, and she's the little sister kind of thing. But it's still young Cheetor to me. Um, you want to take Megatron's next line before Nix is ready to talk? The the delicate circuits uh-huh. or the now then? Delicate. All right. Delicate circuits will begin to rupture soon. You know, beyond the point of repair, your external frame will crack. The techno-organic cells of your alt mode will burn. But you can avoid such pain simply by telling me what I need to know. All right, I'll tell you what you need to know. History barely remembers the original Megatron. It's never going to remember you. (laughs) Megatron's Commander, that's the highest setting. I'm aware of that. Megatron, this is too much. This is not your concern. <laughs> yes, and or like where he, you know, shoves uh-huh. him up against the wall. Insubordination. Yeah, I love that image. That is so good. The lines on it, the colors on it, between. Dinobot's colors and and the showing how you know Megatron's making the movement with the red in the background. Oh, it's so good. And just holding Dinobot up basically by the th- it's basically a, a Megatron Starscream hold, really. Mm-hmm. I you know the old Starscream choke hold. I, like really that's what this reminds me of. It is so cool. And then we get Tarantulas wanting to use one of his experiments. Yep. Oh boy. Um, and then Megatron's like, Yes, an excellent point, Tarantulas. You deserve a reward. You may have the maximal. Mm hmm. Yeah. And Tarantulas is just like, <laughs> Oh, thank you, Megatron. She'll be the perfect test subject for a prototype I've been dying to try. Yeah, it's it's crazy the uh, the stuff that they're they're messing with her with. Yeah, and I love that they brought in the transformation lock lens. I think that is super cool how they used it. Well, and they used it way earlier. Well, right. Obviously, but it just shows tarantulas just had it. But it's right, worse yeah. because he locked her in robot mode so that mm-hmm. she couldn't transform. And then <laughs> she's like, oh, energon poisoning underway. I love how the um, I love how in the middle of this when she's locked, she's like, computer, you're not really helping. <laughs> I just think that is so cool. And I, again, the visuals, the colors, and I know people are going to complain about the backgrounds not being so much, but if you look at the panel where Tarantula says you won't even be able to go into life-saving stasis when the Energon poisoning takes root. Okay, so starting with that panel, you see the night sky around him, you see his little tentacle things off to the left and right, you see a split screen of Nyx basically trying to free herself and then her running away and you see the mountains and the ground and whatever. Again, I don't think right now the backgrounds, as beautiful as they are, they are not something that should be the focus. That's no. what jo- what Josh is doing here in this panel where – where Tarantula says, can't go that way, not that way either, and she's trying to run away. You look at this page. We have all these blast effects, you know, red lines around her. You got the mountains in the background. You got one of the two moons uh, above her and the night sky. I think that's a perfect, 
perfect image of Mm -hmm. a background for showing a character trying to escape. Well, and then I love the fact that, um, you know, uh, aren't you going to take a shot too? And then terrorists are, yeah, you should get it on this now before she's dead. And then Dinobot, I think I will take a shot. And then he just blows it up. <laughs> he he destroys the, the yeah. lock lens. Yep. Fail me once, Dinobot. Shame on me. Fail me twice. Predacons, destroy him. <laughs> I I love the tarantulas in, in Dinobot thing, because like mm-hmm. they, they have this this like dance that they do throughout Beast Wars 2. Yeah. Of just insults. But they yep. have this appreciation of each other too. So it's just weird. Um, but tarantulas, you know, that prototype was one of a kind. You destroyed my baby. Your baby was an abomination. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's like pineapple on pizza. Um, exactly. Yes, that's right. Um, I will have my revenge. I doubt that. And then they're, they're talking about his loyalty. Yeah. He's like, why loyalty is for the simple minded. Mm hmm. Exactly. And it, again, it goes to show the honor he has. And poor Waspidator, he didn't do nothing. I know, he just got elbows in the face, though. Yep. But Dinobot, you know, I also respect my enemies. There is no honor in torture. Yeah. I'm loving Scold. I think Scold versus Dinobot is really cool. Well, and then, uh, you know, he says, you're young, you don't understand yet. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I love how he picks her up and basically just throws her like a frisbee. Mm-hmm. I love that. I think that is so cool. Throws her right at Megatron. Throws her right <laughs> at Megatron, but it knocks them it knocks Megatron and the rest of the Predacons back into the ship. And because Dinobot was the security officer, computer initiate dark side security defense protocol cold code. Omicron D7. Full what lockdown the? is needed. No. <laughs> no, let us out. Let us out. Stop. No one can break through the shielding. We'll have to wait until the cu- computer can be reprogrammed. I can't believe Dinobot did this. Well, I can't. I never liked that guy. And then Wasp in here. I'm almost impressed with Dinobot's treachery. His ex- execution was flawless. But this ship will not keep him safe from reprisal for long. My Predacons, I swear this when I get my hands on Dinobot. Well, you're going to see another flawless execution. Dun, dun, dun. I was like, there's no more. <laughs> <laughs> It's, okay, so we mentioned in this Autobot Lee April in episodes 406 and 407 for the pullback, respectively, that the trades for the main ongoing Transformers series at IDW currently are too long. This is sure. not, it's not, like, I'm hooked. I'm ready. I just wish it wasn't another month until, like, I wish it was, like, next week that we could get issue four. But again, I get it. Monthly comics. It gives the artist time to prepare. It gives, you know, scripts and whatever. And who knows? Maybe Eric and Josh have, you know, done this in advance and they have things that are, you know, ready to go. Maybe they're not working on them right. You know, I don't know. Who knows? But I love what Eric is doing with the story. I love this last panel with Megatron with the Energon bleeding out of his eyes. Or, or just having the red blood marks or whatever it is on his eyes. I love the colors between the black, the red, and the purple. I think that is absolutely cool as hell. I love that this issue mainly focused on the Predacons. Like, the first two issues focused on, you know, setting it up. You know, setting up their transition to prehistoric Earth. Now, even though they don't know that yet, but, you know, we do as the as the readers and whatever and longtime Beast Wars fans. And now we're really getting into what this story is going to be and how Dinobot traders and what happens to Nyx and what's going to happen with 
Rhinox and everybody else and just seeing all and I normally I balk at new characters. I can actually remember and know who these new characters are versus some of the new characters that are in the main ongoing that is separate from this, obviously. But be- but like seeing Scold and seeing Nyx and just seeing everybody here, just I'm digging it so much. I I just yeah I'm I'm loving what he's doing. <laughs> yeah. In between Burnham on on the writing and Josh on the art, it's so good. So so good. Yeah, I just I can't believe it. <laughs> it's it's just I, I have so much fun reading these. I'm like, dang it, now I gotta wait for the next one. <laughs> hey, you know, keeps us going. Keeps us wanting to get them. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> for good reason. Yep. The um the uh, art by Josh Perez, the cover RI. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The, that's the one R. of my cover. favorites for this issue. Yeah, the Josh Perez retail incentive cover was really, really cool. And then of course you have a Back to the Future comic at the end. Yeah, it's Back to the Future number one. Uh it's a it's a free ash can. Transformers Back to the Future number one, so it's the crossover. Um, and I think that that trade is coming out soon. I think it was four issues for that that crossover. I could be wrong, but most likely it was four issues. So, yeah, very, very cool. What would you rate number three for Transformers Beast Wars from IDW Zero to Five? I got to give it another five. It was pretty strong in storytelling and character development. Same here. It's a five all around. It is so, so good. Absolutely love it. This has been episode 408 of the Pullbag, folks. Coming up on the show, this kind of concludes Autobot Lee April. It was a short Autobot Lee April this year. But coming up next, I've got an Origins episode with my buddy, new buddy Donovan Morgan Grant. We talk about a lot of his stuff and how he got into comics. Coming up in May, we've got Batman White Knight Von Fries and Batman Curse of the White Knight with Edward and Kendra the Hales. Also coming up in May, we've got episode 411, 411, so that's going to be a special episode. We've got Beast Wars number 4 at episode 412, and then Radiant Black numbers 3 and 4 at 412.5 for the pull bag. Make sure you tune in this summer to our Top 100 Transformers Characters Countdown, because by the time this podcast airs, the deadlines to submit lists will be over. So we are doing Top 100 Transformers Characters here at the GeekCast Radio Network. It'll be syndicated on multiple shows, the main GCR feed, all things Transformers, TFG1, and other feeds as well. Anything you want to say before we get the heck out of here and prepare prepare for May of 2021? No, I think that's it. Awesome. Where can the people find you online, sir? On the Twitters at SCP21. I'm at TFG and Mike. You can hear all the other network information in the closing of the show. Make your greatest game in the comics, and we will catch you next time here inside the pull bag. Diecast construction. It's a lost art. You've just heard the latest episode of The Pull Bag, the GCRN's first comic review and discussion podcast. There are several ways to get in touch with us and leave feedback for the show. You can visit the website, geekcastradio.com, where you can comment on the episode and all of our different podcasts. You can rate and leave a review for the show on iTunes. Be sure to leave us feedback. Become a fan of us on Facebook, facebook.com slash thepullbag. Send us an email, feedback at geekcastradio.com. Follow us on Twitter at The Pullbag and at Geekcast Radio. So until next time, make your great escape into comics and unleash the geek in you.